Hey guys, Travis here with 1UP Adventures and Fly Products USA. Today's video is going to be an in-depth tutorial on how to use the advanced cockpit that's now available on the Fly Products Zenit Premier. We're going to go over the features of the cockpit, including the displays, the controls, everything that you would need so you can take advantage of all these features that you have available at your fingertips as far as information on what your engine is doing and fingertip controls for the accessories and the lighting system for the Zenit Premier. So this is the Fly Product Zenit cockpit and we're going to turn on the master switch which this controls the electronics as well as power to the starter. Now we'll turn on the engine switch. Now this controls the ignition system so if we turn this switch off which I'm going to do right now and hit the start button this will not start. Now if I were to turn this switch on and hit the start button, it will start up. But for safety purposes in this video, I'm simply just going to leave the master switch on. For the altimeter, we simply click the button, just push the button in, and then we rotate this knob to our desired altitude. Now, if you want to go MSL and you know your altitude, feel free to adjust it to that. However, I like to go to zero or just below zero, so negative 10 maybe, just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room. But for this purpose, we'll leave it at zero and we're set and good to go. So you can see these buttons here, Magneto 1, Magneto 2, Start, and then there's this little silver button, and this is for your Skyflar strobe system. And to turn this on, you simply push it down until it blinks, let it go, and this is our strobe. You can see the green light blinking, that is how often our strobe is flashing. Now if I just tap the button once, that is what our strobes are doing now. One more time, now they have a lot faster of a strobe. One more, now they're consistently on, they're steady on, all the way around, including the white lights that are on there for the strobe. If I tap it one more time, this is just kind of our running lights on our left and right, just like an airplane. Now, if you want to turn this off, you simply hold it down and let it go, and the system is now off. While you're flying with your Skyflar, if you're in the air and all of these switches are on and you're flying around and you go to turn it on or you turn it off while you're in flight and they don't turn back on, you simply flick the master switch down flick it back up and the Skyflar will turn right back on. Some people get worried that if you turn this switch off in flight that it will kill your engine. But right now I'm going to show you that that doesn't happen. Clear prop. The engine still runs just fine with the master switch off. As you guys can see, this motor is turned on Master switch is on, engine stop is on, and we're going to start this machine and we're going to talk about the magnetos. What is going to happen is I'm going to start the machine and I'm going to push magneto 1. We're going to get about a 40 to 50% drop in RPM with only magneto 1 pushed. And if when I let it go, it'll go back to its standard RPM. And then with magneto 2, it will seem like nothing happens. But what happens is, is when you push both of them, it kills the engine. So we know magneto 2 is working as it should. Don't be alarmed when you see the RPMs on these. Generally anything below 4,000, it's not going to read it 100% accurately. This is really when you're flying and you want to find that nice cruise power and you want to see what your max RPM is. So don't be alarmed if the fly meter does not register perfectly under 4,000 RPM. Here we go, I'm gonna start it up, clear prop. Idling, magneto one. Drop down to about 50% of what we had. We're gonna let it go. And you're gonna see when I hit Magneto 2, nothing happens. It's bouncing around like I said, but now if I hit both, it turns the engine off. This test should be performed before you fly each day. All right guys, we're gonna go over the features of the Fly Henry meter. The Fly Henry meter is really neat because it now integrates a lot of the information that we used to have in a number of separated gauges on this cockpit. It's also backlit and very easy to read in flight. So let's go over what information we have on the Fly Henry. Up in this top left corner, we've got temp one, which is set up for water temperature. So this is the water temperature on the machine right now. It's showing, and we have ours set to Fahrenheit, so it's 108 degrees Fahrenheit. Next line down is your exhaust gas temperature, which we just ran the machine for a few seconds, so that's why it's showing 140 degrees Fahrenheit. In flight, you're gonna see numbers much higher than this, and often over 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The third is not used on the Zenit Premier, and the fourth temperature reading is your outside or your ambient air temperature. So it's 83 degrees Fahrenheit here in Florida right now. 
On your central screen, in this top right corner is the engine RPM. And as Kyle mentioned, that's not gonna be very accurate when you're below 4,000, and that's completely normal. On this top left side, it says zero hours, zero minutes, and zero seconds. That is your present flight time. So I'll show you real quick. I am gonna start the engine. And as soon as I start the engine, you'll see these seconds start counting. One, two, three. I'm gonna turn it off. And it stops counting. So that tells you for your current flight, since you started the engine, how long the engine's been running, which is a really good indicator of how long you've been up in the air. Down below that, you've got your battery voltage. So right now with the engine off, we're at 12.4 volts. The uh, Cosmos engine does have a charging system, so you never have to worry about charging the battery. And you would see if we started the engine, that voltage would go up. And especially if we ran up the engine, you'd see it go up into the you know, 13, maybe even low 14 volt range as the engine is producing power to charge the battery and to power the panel systems. Uh, the little F means that we've got our unit set up in Fahrenheit for temperature. Uh, right up here, you've got a, it's a 0, 0.0 gallons per hour. Now this feature is not available yet. Fly Products is working on it, but this is a fuel flow feature. And we'll have a upgrade kit available, um, hopefully by the end of this year or early 2023 that you can install on your own, plug it into your Fly Henry central control unit, and it will tell you your fuel flow in gallons per hour. And then over here on the right in the bottom displays, You've got a, a graphic indicator of your fuel on board, which again is not available yet, and it will give you that in decimals here as well. Um, Fly Products will also have that kit out by the end of the year or early 2023, and it will be plug and play into the Fly Henry, so you'll know exactly how much fuel you have on board during your flight, which makes it a little bit easier to know when it's time to land. So that's your central display. What we're gonna do now is show you guys how to get into some of the menus and see some of the other features and setups within the Fly Henry meter. So to get into anything, you've got two buttons, escape and enter. You're gonna press and hold the enter button for about two seconds, and that brings you to the main menu. You've got alarms, engine timers, maximum values, fuel consumption, and settings. We're gonna start real briefly, and we won't go all the way into all these, but with alarms. So to again, to scroll between menus, it's just a short click of the enter button. And then to get into a menu, it's a long click of the enter button. So we're in the alarms menu. We've got temperature, pressure, fuel, and ACCU, which we don't use those items right now. So let's go into the temperature alarms. We'll press enter to get in. Alarm temperature one, that's gonna be the top left temperature as they go down. Two is gonna be right below. So right now, temperature one, like we mentioned earlier, is set up for water temperature. Temperature two is set up for exhaust gas temperature. Temperature three is unused. Uh, and then temperature four is your ambient temperature, temperature five is unused. So we'll go into alarm temperature for the water temperature, which is temperature one, we go in, and we can see right now it's set for 194 degrees Fahrenheit. As we all know, water boils at 212, so we don't get out, want our, our water temperatures to get up that high, so you will get an alarm indication if your water temperature gets up to 194 degrees, and you'll get a graphic display on the screen that shows alarm, and the backlighting will start flashing on you if you see this alarm. So it's a really neat way, because without looking at the screen, you'll have something trying to get your attention to tell you like, hey, something's too hot here. In this case, it would be the water temperature. Now, in reality, I have never seen the water temperature on the Cosmos go above 180 degrees. And during normal cruise flight, it's usually about 160 to 165 degrees. Now to get out of this menu, we're gonna hit escape. Boom. Now we're gonna go down to alarm temperature two, which is your exhaust gas temperature. We'll go into that and it is set for 1202 degrees Fahrenheit. Something I really important to point out here right now, uh, if you look at the Viterazzi manual, it's 650 degrees Celsius is your maximum exhaust gas temperature, which translates to 1202 degrees Fahrenheit. The, that only applies at full power. It is completely normal at cruise or high cruise power to have temperatures above the maximum value. It's not a problem with the engine, the engine's running just fine, but if you were at full power, and you saw exhaust gas temperatures over 650 degrees Celsius or over 1202 degrees Fahrenheit, then you really need to um, bring, that, uh, bring the craft down to the ground and figure out why your engine is running too hot at maximum RPM. I'm gonna go back out, escape, and we'll come out of the alarm temperatures and out of the temperature menu altogether. Again, uh, well, real quick, when we have fuel, uh, onboard capabilities. You can set a minimum fuel alarm on here as well. Like right now it's set to 
you know, if you get down that low, the screen's gonna start to flash and let you know. Escape out. Uh, next one, and this is gonna be important for you guys, the engine timers. So we'll go down to engine timers, and this is where the system keeps track of the total time on the machine. You've got timer two and three, which you can zero. Timer one is what I showed you at the beginning where it says actual. See, it says six seconds right now. That's because I ran the engine for six seconds and I turned it off. If we turn the master power off and on, that resets to zero automatically. You have two other trip timers. You can reset them. I don't suggest you do because these are keeping track of the total time on your engine. You could reset one, like I, for example, you want to, um, you know you got to do a 25 hour maintenance. Once you have that 25 hour maintenance done, you could use timer three and reset it. So when timer three gets to 25 hours again, you would know it's time to do that 25, 25 hour maintenance. So right now, timer two and timer three on this machine are saying the same 15 hours, 22 minutes, and 44 seconds. That is the total engine runtime on this machine since we took it out of the box a few weeks ago. You can also set up service intervals down here. Right now it says four hours and 37 minutes to service because there's a service interval in there set up for 20 hours right now. I'm gonna go ahead and escape out of that. And we can go down to maximum values next where you can show your total maximum values for anything that's ever come up on your screen. And if I hit that button, I don't think this exhaust gas temperature is quite right, but uh, 182 is the maximum water temperature that this machine has ever seen. Uh, 92 is the maximum ambient temperature this machine has ever seen. And this isn't really accurate either. Obviously the machine runs at about 7,400 RPM max, so 14,735 is not correct. But again, two stroke tachometers, sometimes they jump and do weird things. So don't worry about that. And then hit escape to go back, back to this menu. We're not gonna mess with fuel consumption right now because we don't have that capability, that's future. And then we're gonna go down to the settings menu. So the settings menu, again, I'm gonna press enter, long hold to get into it. And we're gonna go to display settings first, long hold to get into it. And we can set our backlight. So usually a lot of times when the machines are delivered, the backlight is turned off and you guys are probably gonna to wanna to turn this on. So right now backlight level ranges zero to eight. We have our machine set to seven. Uh, there we go. Eight, nine, and then off. <coughs> you can hold the button, you can see the backlight come up. And we'll go back to eight. Then we'll save that. And go to the contrast menu. And here we can also hold the button to change the contrast level. I like high contrast, so I'm gonna leave ours at nine, looks good. Um, RPM sensor constant. So if you get your machine out of the box and the RPM is showing double what you think it should be, that's just the RPM sensor constant on this. So you would just go into here and you would change it to either one impulse per revolution, two impulses per revolution, or 0.5 until the RPMs make sense. You also have settings in here for your fuel indicator, your fuel flow meter, future, um, and your temperature sensors, your temperature units, and your consumption units. So for example, if you want your temperature units to be in Celsius, go down the temperature units, change it to Celsius, and save. So now if I go back to my main screen here, you can see these temperatures are now Celsius, ambient temperature of 29 degrees Celsius. So that, guys, that covers the Fly Henry. That's everything that you need to know to make adjustments to your Fly Henry and make it work to your individual needs. Last thing on the cockpit we're gonna mention is the least technically complex. This is the analog clock. Uh, we added this because the cockpit has a blank space here, 57 millimeters wide, and we wanted to have something on there and the clock is super convenient to have to keep track of time while you're flying. So we are now including this. Uh, we just started including the clock on all Zenit Cosmoses, and we'll send that to you with the 3M adhesive tape and it will be your choice whether you wanna mount it or not mount it. Some guys like to put stickers or other things on this space, but we like having the clock here. And All right, guys, thank you for watching. We hope that this video helped you build a little bit of knowledge on the Fly Product Zenit Premier and understanding the Fly Henry meter and understanding just how this cockpit works so you can use yours just a little bit more efficiently and utilize all of the options that it has to offer. So if you have any other questions or any suggestions for a future video in terms of how things work, how things go together, or anything else that you want to see, please let us know, and thank you for watching.